let me give you a scenario, right? Let's say Dana White thought and or was worried that John Jones, now it could be any meaningful fighter that you got time and money into that people recognize and are willing to pay to see, right? This is a star-driven business. Some of you believe that you love MMA. I mean, you, you literally don't even know what you like. And that's, that's okay. The last person you would ask for an opinion of is the consumer. Do not ask the consumer what they want. They don't, they don't know, even if they give you an answer. So there are a lot of people that it's the greatest sport in the world, right? They're stars, they're celebrities. They come out, oh, it's the greatest sport in the world. I love it. It's the fastest growing. It's wonderful. Well, they, they didn't understand. They didn't care about the sport. They didn't watch the sport. They didn't go when it was a regional scene, a local show. They didn't go when it was a... They cared about these two athletes. They cared about the big fights. They cared about the story. It didn't have anything to do with the punches and the kicks, but they would swear it did. They would raise their hand on a bike. They would swear, I love the sport. Not realizing how driven it is by the personalities and the individual person, not the rules or the weight classes or what's stake at stake, which in many times is a championship. It's the individual. So when you have someone that you've been with a period of time, it takes time to build a star. At least in a broad stroke, it takes time. And when you have somebody that you've been with for a long time and they've got some years left and you'd like to get those years and you could even maximize those years, right? I mean, it's nothing wrong. This is all above board. And they are thinking of saying goodbye. Just, just get up and walk it out of the room. Could you imagine? I mean, could you imagine? Somebody great at something. Somebody's the best at something. And you really need that something as many times as you can get that something. And they just get up and walk out of the room. They're not hurt or tired. They haven't diminished. They're not about to get beat or embarrassed. Or they just get to walk out of the room. It's a unique spot, right? So let's say you were in that spot. And it's not that John Jones, and it's not that in this case, we're talking about John Jones, but it's not that the athlete is so damn big. It's not as though it's a Conor McGregor. It, it's not that it's uh, yeah, Mike Tyson or De La Hoya or Floyd May write and draw, somebody that could really draw. It's, it's not like that. But compared to the rest of the field, it sure is. I got a room full. I got a roster full of mediocrity that's completely interchangeable. Yeah, these two guys fight. And they're, they're on this card in this position. Okay, here, you know what? I'm going to pull them out. I'm not even going to put them on the card. We'll put two other guys in the same car. Nothing changes. No more media covers it. No more fans sell. No more merch. Nothing changes. You have interchangeable mediocrities, and then you have John. And it's not like John's a guarantee. It's, it's not. I understand that. But compared to everyone else, it is. So if you're worried that you're going to lose him, you don't have a ton of options. You could try to make sure that you gave him favorable matches, assuming that he would be driven by the victory. And on a lot of guys, you'd be right. That would do it. Or if you wanted to keep him, you knew him well enough and you worked with him for a decade and a half, that you could throw more money at it. Maybe you believe that that's the motivation he would need. Favorable matches, which is... More money, which is, right? It's not a lot that you can do. But if you don't believe either one of those work, your next option is to come out to the public before he does and tell them after this one he's going to retire. And when you do that, you're now making a psychological play. But the addition of funds was the psychological play. It was to change his mind, not to change his bank account. The opponent, just by example, that was to, to change his mind and get him to want to do it. For example, it's all about changing his mind. So you would come out and you would tell the world, feel after Stipe is going to retire. And then you'd support it. You'd support your own thesis with evidence. And that evidence is he would simply have nothing else to prove. As a matter of fact, 
And this is the seed you're trying to plant. Matter of fact, I'm not even sure. I'd, I don't even know if I'd have anything for him. Right? So now all of a sudden, this is our, this is our idea. I don't even know if I'd have anything for him. I th he, he would have cleaned out every error that there is. And... But you're doing that. Hoping the response from John is, I don't know what he's talking about. I'm dying to get back in. I heard that Stipe's next, and I sure want him, but I'm taking a look at Sergey and Tom and whoever else is getting signed. I'm the champion. I'm going to be here a while. I'm going to book in this son of a bitch. He's the youngest champion ever. I will leave as the oldest champion. If that's what you're hoping for. John comes out and gave you the opposite of what you wanted. He said, yeah, it's probably going to be my last. <laughs> okay. All right. I made a move, but now you've made a move, right? This is what's going on in front of you guys, right? This is a game of chess, and you're all seeing it. You just don't know that a game of chess is going on. You just, you just think, all right, the promoter said this, and John said, all right, this is what you think. So then you come to me, and I, I, I tell you a little higher level of thinking. So, promoter worries. He's going to lose a guy that can sell more tickets than anybody else within the division. Promoter gets in front of it, says that he's going to retire. Guy comes out and says, yes, the promoter's right. Now it's the promoter's ball. And he could come out and he could say, hey, this is the next step to it. Hey, making the right decision. He really is. And what a guy, what a great fighter. But obviously, Pavlich is coming up, man. He's bigger than him. He's younger than him. He's 30 and 0. It's a hell of a lot better record. Hell of a lot more experience. John got kicked out of a job. I know, I know who said he can't train at their gym. I don't even know who his trainer is. I don't know what Jimmy rep did. Sergey Pavlovich. He got the blessing of Putin himself. You could play it that way. And you could try to insult. You could. And that would probably work, quite frankly. That would probably work. That's not what you wanted to go with. And now the relationship is about to say that's not what you wanted to go with. But that's where you will go if. You need to. Now, John says, I'm probably going to do steep and I'm probably going to roll out of here. Now, when John told that lie, he wasn't ready, like most liars, for a follow-up question. Which is why? Why would you leave? You don't have enough money. You don't have enough money to leave. And in a, you have nothing else you can do. Which uh, no interview wants to say that to John. Right? They're scared of it. I would have said, I mean, scared of it, but it would be, it would be rude. So they're not going to ask him about that. And John ain't going to say, man, I got nothing else I can do, and I need the money. He's not. You're right. You just got this really weird spot where everybody's going to be speaking in a, in a strange language. So once John says it, which isn't what you wanted to hear, you've got to make a move. And one of your moves could be, what, hey, that's the right decision. Boy, is it. You get in there with Steve Bates. You know, Steve Bates great, 40 years old, and, you know, sub to 40 not a very big, heavy one. Oh, he's a Sergey Pavlich. Just the right move. You could do that, and it's probably headed there. Or you can just move on without even discussing it. You can simply say, Stipe versus Jones, which is signed, by the way. I, I need to make sure I tell you that. I, I slipped that in a couple of days ago, but I need to tell you that real clear. BJ Penn. Dot com had picked a wonderful website, but it picked up a piece that I had done with Brennan Schaub where I said, Pavlich and Jones is going to happen. In terms of Sergey's been contacted and agreed, John has been contacted and has agreed. We're going to take one last crack at Stipe, but then they're going to this fight. I, I, I had brought this news. That's exactly what did happen, but Stipe, they've signed. They've signed and they've agreed to fight. So when you announce that fight, you announce the date and the on sale. Soon after that, you could come out and say, right, John Jones will say, this is going to be my last fight. Now, John never planned to market his fight this way. It got handed to him. And he thought he was following the cues of the boss. He didn't know he was playing a game of chess. He heard the boss, so he tried to back up the boss. He didn't know why we were doing this. He just figured it was best for me. I mean, that's what actually happened here. But once you say something, it starts to become true. Once you say something, it starts to become a reality. It's just the prop. laws of attraction are a very real thing. So now that this game of chess is continuing, when you announce the fight, you could then come up with other news, which is after this fight, we're going to have a vacant heavyweight championship, and we're looking for contenders now. Sergey Pavlovich has already been contacted. 
but I'm having Tom Aspinall fight so-and-so on this date, and they will draw into Sergi to fight for the belt that John is going to vacate after his match with Steve. And then you get John going, time the F out. I have never retired. I never said I was going to retire. Bring me that fat Russian. And quit telling me how dangerous he is. Right, John can get pissed. John is going, John does not want to retire after Steve. He doesn't plan to retire. He doesn't have the money to retire. He didn't know that he was in an intellectual game with the master. He didn't know that. He thought he was back in the master. So he just said what he said. So it's, a, it's an interesting spot. And this has been played out before, right? But we, this is, we had to do this with Henry Cejudo. Henry Cejudo grabs a mic at 246, says triple C's out. Dana said, don't, don't even ask me about this. Everyone's asked me, don't even ask me about it. I'm headed home on Tuesday and have a matchmakers meeting. I'm going to make a title fight for that weight class. If Henry calls me and he's the champion, then I will be getting him an opponent. If he doesn't call me, I will take him at his word. I will strip him and I will find two other guys to fight for the vacated belt. That ended everything. Ended very quickly. I'm just sharing with you. This is how these things were done. This is why this was done. There was not a reality that John was going to retire after Steve. And when John said it, he just didn't know the game that was being played. He thought he was back in the boss. I'm just sharing with you what happened. John Jones is going to fight Steve A. John Jones is more than willing to fight Sergio. Look, I got to say it, right? I'm his nemesis. I got to say it. He was willing to fight Francis. He thought he was fighting Stipe. He ends up fighting Surreal, and he's going right back to Stipe, and he's already agreed to fight Sergi. You say what you want about John Jones, I'll continue to as well. The thing is, though, John is scared or he's not a competitor. It's simply not true.